Hello everyone! Today, I'm going to teach you how to use PathWiz. This will be the first installment of a two-part video series on PathWiz, with part 1 introducing you how to browse and navigate pathways, and part 2 focusing on how to make your very own pathway from scratch. Let's begin with a short introduction to PathWiz. PathWiz is a web server designed for the creation of colorful, visual pleasing, and biologically accurate pathway diagrams that are understandable to both humans being interactive and computers being machine readable. PathWiz has been used to generate over 700 pathway diagrams that are now found in a number of popular databases including HMDB, short for the Human Metabolome Database, DrugBank, and SMPDB, short for the Small Molecule Pathway Database. PathWiz allows pathways to be drawn to have a high level of biological detail and complexity. Why should we use it? As a web server, PathWiz is accessible from almost any place and compatible with essentially any operating system, which makes this tool incredibly versatile. Along with its versatility, PathWiz also houses a public gallery of hundreds of pathways and thousands of pathway components that can be viewed and expanded upon its users. Guest users have the option of freely creating pathways, browsing, and editing public pathways, along for a highly flexible, intuitive, and easy-to-understand interface. Unlike other similar web servers offered online such as Keg, Reactome, and Wikipathways, PathWiz offers many features beyond your standard pathway website. For example, one of these features includes the ability to create and edit pathways. Although namely Wikipathways and other offer similar services, what makes PathWiz different is you don't have to register an account in order to start drawing your pathway. Instead, you can immediately start by clicking Guest Draw on the home page and start creating. This is a great and definitely a plus for those of you who want to experiment and try things first. However, the only caveat would be that your work, i.e. pathway, is public which means everyone and anyone can see and edit it. If you prefer your pathways not to be altered or edited in any way, one way to prevent other users from doing so is by turning on the lock feature. Locking a pathway makes it unable to be edited or drawn but still allows others to view, replicate, or propagate it. Guest accounts have access to this feature and have the ability to lock any of their own and also other public pathways. However, as a word of caution, once a pathway is locked, it becomes inaccessible to anyone including yourself. To address this, PathWiz also has another option of registering a private account. Users registered in a system like Guess have the ability to create their own pathways and have equal editing privileges on public pathways, but with the added benefit or option of making their own pathways public or private. If users want to create private pathways for their own personal use, they can do so by first registering an account. The choice of registering an account is completely up to your personal preferences. Another set of features deserving of attention and unique to PathWiz are its pathway replication and pathway propagation functionalities. The pathway replication function allows existing pathways to quickly be duplicated so that they can be edited, altered, or modified in any way that you desire. This saves time as you don't have to draw a pathway from scratch. The pathway propagation function allows for existing pathways to be automatically propagated across species. For example, we could start with a TCA cycle in humans and propagate the TCA pathway to yeast without having to draw in all the new proteins and reactions. Later in part 2 of this series, I'll show you how to do this. Lastly, one of the most appealing features of PathWiz is the amount of detail that PathWiz allows you to put into illustrating your pathway. If you look at the glycolysis pathway drawn in Keg, Reactome, and Wiki pathways and compare it to PathWiz, you can see a real difference. PathWiz features a palette of colors and offers a vast array of customization options that can make its pathways both colorful and richly detailed. Now that we're familiar with PathWiz, let's learn how to navigate around the site. Let's start with the tutorial. Open Google and go to this site. For your convenience, I put the link in the description box. Opening the website, you'll see five different tabs. Browse, Draw, Download, Help, and Sign In. Under the Browse tab, this is where you can start browsing through the hundreds of different pathways in the PathWiz gallery. Under the Draw tab, this is where you can start drawing pathways. Under the Downloads tab, 
This is where you can download any of these datasets used in PathWiz. Under the Hub tab, this is where you can find new information and guides on how to use the site in much more detail. On the left and right sides is a search bar where you can search pathways based on the name and the sign in or sign out button that logs us into and out of the website. If you want to go back to the home page at any time, click on this header. Lastly, in the home page description, similar buttons are displayed by scrolling to the bottom of the page. You may browse pathways here or start drawing your own pathways here using these features. Now that we're familiar navigating around the website, let's start browsing some pathways. Clicking Browse expands an array of different options. As you can see here, there are several different types of pathways groups, and clicking them will redirect us to that specific category of pathways. We can also use the search bar above to browse for more specific results. For example, let's look at glycolysis in humans. By typing the term glycolysis and clicking enter in the search bar, a new page is generated with a list of pathways highlighted in yellow with our keyword glycolysis. Scrolling down are more results. Header columns are included displaying the pathways ID, pathway, and metadata of each search result. Here, we can see the pathway ID, full pathway name, the organism, and type of pathway it belongs to, a short description, when it was created and updated, and the author behind this pathway. Let's look at glycolysis in humans. Before doing so, be sure to check out the pathway legend page that shows a figure legend of all the compounds and components used in a typical PathWiz pathway. Although most of the images used are pretty straightforward and intuitive, it's a good idea to acquaint ourselves with some special symbols used in PathWiz before viewing our very first pathway. Once you've gotten yourself familiar with the figure legend, let's go to the glycolysis pathway. Click on either the image or the view pathway button, which should successfully launch a new page. Depending on what browser you have and your monitor settings, the pathway may appear too zoomed in or too zoomed out. We can fix that by adjusting the zoom in and zoom out buttons located near the directional pad on the top right corner. We can move around the pathway by clicking and dragging our cursor to select areas of interest and click on components we're interested in. By clicking on a component, a small pop-up appears with a detailed description on the structure components, description, and reactions of that specific component, which links to many useful databases. To get a full view of our pathway, we can toggle the hide and show options to reveal the submenu located on the side. The description tab here gives us a brief synopsis of the pathway, references, and useful metadata. If we need to look for specific components in the pathway, we can use the highlight feature which highlights select compounds we want to look for. We can toggle the color scheme and pathway between black or white and color to help visualize the highlighted components. The analyze tool can be used to enter relative concentration values of select components of our pathway and to display low and high concentrations of other compounds using a concentration color gradient. Under downloads, you can download an image of this pathway. Finally, in settings, we can turn on or off the complex membrane and set the background to blue or white. In summary, we learned how to navigate and browse in PathWiz and to understand the structure of a typical PathWiz pathway. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and please stay tuned for part two of PathWiz to come.